Oh Lord, you are excellent. You are excellent. You are excellent. 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 You are marvelous. You are marvelous. You are marvelous. 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 You are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. 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 You are excellent. You are excellent. You are excellent. 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 I have a God who never fails. I have a God. What kind of God do you have? I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. Who never fails. Who never fails. Jesus never fails. Forevermore. Amen. Jesus never fail. Amen. Jesus never fail. Amen. Jesus never fail. Jesus never fail. Jesus never fail. Forevermore. I stand upon the solid rock, which is Jesus. I stand upon the word of God, which is Jesus. I stand on agape love, which is Jesus. I stand upon the peace of the Lord, which is Jesus. I stand upon the faith of God, which is Jesus. I stand upon the crown of God, which is Jesus. I stand on the mighty power of God, which is Jesus. I stand on the hope of God. I hope against hope because of Jesus. I stand on the joy of the Lord, which is Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Today, we are going to go into the core of the matter. And that core is grace. My grace. The grace of God that is given out to all of us, whether we merit it or we don't merit it. You cannot even merit the grace of God. Who are you, human, that you merit it? Without Christ, we cannot stand before God. Without Christ, we cannot obtain the grace of God. A lot of people move around, they just say, oh, this world is, I'm a free thinker, I'm an atheist, I'm a douche, I'm a avocation. They say all kinds of uh, <laughs> bogus and uh, rubbish stuff that is not substantiated with anything. You just ask them a simple question. This oxygen you are getting, where is it from? Who is making it? Why is it free? Stay with that oxygen for a few seconds or a few minutes. You are gone. What did God used to bring us to life? He breathed his spirit into us. And where did this is? It came through the air. It came as air into this life of Adam. And they are saying, that's how we are here. Because of that, we still rely and depend on that breath of God. Every moment. Try not to take a breath for a few minutes or a few seconds. And you know, or get sick, and you don't have enough oxygen level. You see how the panic, because without the oxygen, you are gone. You have blood, you have everything. If you don't put the oxygen there, nothing is going to function. God, you are too much. Well, I kind of mentioned it already. Today, we're going to be talking about grace, finally. 
we've been postponing it. Not that we're afraid of grace or we are worried about grace. No, because it's the main, the main, it's the main action. You know, you always say this is the main event. This is the main event. It's the climax of Agape series, volume one and two. We don't know what God will do after that because he continues to reveal himself to us as much as we can handle, as much as we can download without going berserk or going hysterical. You have to be able to control that anointing and control that delivery, that download, so that you don't get overloaded. What the heart can take, the heart, this heart, you look at this heart, it can take the whole universe. If not, how can God live in there? <laughs> I can the, Everything, this heart, there's has no limit. But the brain, for short of words to use, is almost useless because it confuses things, it over rationalize, it over think, think back and forth. So when you know God, walk on your heart, make your heart sweet so I can take more, it can do more. Manage how you get the flow, flow from your heart to the brain because it's not, they are not of the same capacity. If you overload it, it will blow up. You might end up in the hospital, you might be dead, or I don't know, anything can happen to you. Or you might even get yourself confused because the rate at which God is delivering this message to us is higher than what the normal human being can cope with. That's why we need the grace of God. We need Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit to help us and guide us, to give us all chance. Because you might be in a situation where you ask a question, 3,000 answers can come to your mind at the same time. 3,000. <laughs> are you going to say that? Are you the only speaker there? <laughs> no. You know, sometimes some of those people, they say they are curious. They are asking too many questions. Are they investigating us? We are not investigating anybody. We are just excited. We want to know the facts, the truth. Only the truth can set you free, says the word of God. Praise God. So today we're going to talk about grace. I've talked about different ways to talk about it. And uh, the shot came in firing line, fresh from the firing line, uh, number 25. And uh, this was on uh, March 26, 2018, at 3.36 uh, p.m. Mountain Standard Time, March 25. Yeah, I was in Canada then, just preparing for... Uh, the launching of Agape Love Letters, Volume 1 and 2. So it was during that mission trip. I was just going there. It came, it came as a fire like God said, no, 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 cool down. This is too hot. Just let it cool down. Do other things first. Eat all the appetizers, everything, before you go for the main course. This is the main course. If you are hearing this video, pay attention. But it's good you listen to the other things so that you have all the appetizer and you see the penultimate summary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our God is a great God. It's a wonderful God. If you know Him. If you don't know Him, you might be confused by all these things I'm saying. It might sound like gibberish or rubbish. If you are confused by it, you are angry by it, you are offended by it, what I'm saying? Harakushika. Run to the nearest hospital. Put your heart on the meter. Let them check it. Then put your liver on the meter. Maybe add the kidney. I bet you two out of three will have some functionality issues. Maybe major issues. Check. If you, are, if you don't know already, just go to the hospital. If you don't have money to pay, send me an email. I'll pay for the test for you. If you fail, you return the money. If I fail, you keep the money. Praise God. So we'll start from the Genesis. The fire line, because we put some notes down. We're going to make a fire line. Say, no, let's take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. Because this was already a couple of It changed. Things changed. We're in the fire line. The next thing we are being lovely and kind and sweet and everything. And people were falling off the ship. I'm telling you that. A lot of friends, family, business partners, they fell off the ship. During their country. Nobody pushed them. They were just jumping. The boat was too hot, too sweet and lovely. You know? Agape love is a dangerous game. They say love is a, agape love is a very dangerous game because when you get into it, it's like you're looking through a transparent, it's transparent glass. You see everything. But don't say anything because you're going to be in trouble. Praise God. Maintain your peace. Maintain your peace. Just do what you need to do. So we'll just check, um, we'll check some of these materials here that I put down so that we can get some already documented verbiage and then we'll talk about other things. Before we go into that, no, let me give you an intro. Yeah, this will be delicious. Praise the Lord. This thing you're going to be here is fresh. I don't know if anybody has said it before. If anybody has heard it, me, I do my work within my own cocoon. I don't look left. I don't look right. 
so that there's no plagiarism or anything. Or anybody saying this, if I take anybody's content, I try to take acknowledgement. Or I said it is free, free content that anybody can use. The word of God is free for anybody. Anybody that claims right to it, their right hand may be gone first. While they are sleeping, <laughs> they wake up. There will be no sign of cut, no bleeding. It will be smooth like it's been gone for a long time. <laughs> That's the first thing that will happen. The right hand is gone. <laughs> now could she see some countries and crazy countries in the middle East, they are cutting people's hand and leg off they don't know what to do that's not how it's done he just leave the person let agape love pour on him they will be embarrassed to submission from love if they cannot submit maintain some distance because they may have crossed the line so sometimes when you are trying to love somebody you are trying to show kindness they are angry they are offended they are angry be careful with those people. Their heart is deeply wicked. Because your goodness and love is irritating the spirit of Lucifer in their heart. That is the truth. Anybody who doubts it, come. You use you that doubt it as a guinea pig to do the research. And find that maybe you that the doubter, you have a problem. Because if you have a sweet heart, love of God, you understand what I'm saying. It will be delicious to you. You may even not even have time to eat meal just to listen and hear and understand the flow. So the news that came in this morning, I'll give you a little background. I grew up very stubborn, very hard-headed and hard-hearted. <laughs> but most of the time, I make sure I do the right thing because if I have to do something bad, it's going to be very extraordinary, beyond human recognition. So because of that, I don't even bother. Because what's the need? <laughs> to prove the point to who? To dead people? No, I didn't bother. I didn't bother to do all those things. But once in a while, you know, when I was in elementary and uh, secondary school, junior, or what you call junior and senior, Junior and uh, senior high, whatever, you know. I got into some fights, unofficial fights, behind closed doors, you know. Submissions? Kakushi, Karabakuku. Ah, by God's grace, then. I don't know. I don't want to go to anybody who come and fight with me. I don't need to fight with anybody. God is fighting for me now. The submission. Get somebody into submissions. Within 30 seconds to a minute. Submission. I'll just look at the person. Watch. Watch and the thing that's why you see bosses they go like this, you know. They are watching for your spirit, they are watching not your body, they are watching for your spirit because where your spirit goes, that's where you go. So when the spirit moves to the right, the body goes with the spirit. That's the trick. So that's why they throw their punch. You think they are throwing the wrong punch, the person walks into the punch. That's the secret of boxing. Even my smash has all this. You watch, you look, you go in the spirit. It's not a physical fire, the physical fire, the world champion or Muhammad Ali is talking about. No, it talks to your spirit. It talks to your spirit. Even if you are a giant, you'll be intimidated. Your spirit will be frightened if you have a spirit of fear or you don't have a clean heart. Look at the few people that were able to de defeat him. Their hearts are good. Look at George Foreman and other people. Clean heart. Look at their end. Delicious and lovely people. Praise God. So, the news I want to tell you is that today I go to the heavenlies to cause trouble. I go to the heavenlies to cause trouble to fight. I've been there once to fight and they just relax. When I'm under pressure, I try to shake my body. Let me just put it that way. God just knows that the mother is going to be distressed or it's going to be angry or something's going to happen. And when I'm distressed, and I don't need to move from where I am. I don't need to move from where I am for things to happen. I didn't know that I had a power, gift, or talent. I don't need to move. I just need to look at the angry situation. Who are the people causing this thing? And just shake my head. They are not worth my time. Once I say that, God takes over. God takes over. So sometimes when I confront people, I try to get them. It's out of love. Because if I don't do anything myself, God takes over. Not Jesus will take over. God the Father. And Jesus who just love them. Pour them some honey, honey and pancake. That's my brother's style. Everybody has their own. I leak, escalate to the Father. Side escalation, you know. And the Father knows. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. That law kicks in immediately. 
touch not my anointed. Do my, is the strongest law. You want to provoke God? Jesus Christ steps aside. Once you touch the anointed and this, he steps aside. Let the Father take care of it. Because he cannot kill anybody. He cannot take any action. Any violence. Jesus cannot. It's not, it's not in him. He cannot do anything. He cannot. No matter kill him. So what did they crucify? Did he do anything? He could have ended the world. Who oh, was they create end it and create another one? That is the power of Christ. That's why you have to be close to Jesus. If you are close to Jesus, He's so sweet. He will make sure that no harm comes to you by no chance. Even when some harm things they have come, most is a stepping stone to greater testimony, greater victory. You have to overcome. If you want to win gold medal in Olympics, did you just see that when they just throw the gold medal to you? Even if your father is the owner of all the gold in the physical. They will not throw it. You have to go out there and compete. Go above and beyond others. Show and demonstrate. Not with steroids. With pure strength and pure wisdom. And most of the thing is all spiritual. It's not the physical training. How do you kick into gear around uh, 100 meters in 9 seconds? Your spirit has to be strong. Strong enough to convince you, to convict you that you can do all things. Look at those professional, the professional athletes when they talk. They talk with so much confidence, even when they are losing the game. They don't have a losing mentality, a losing mind. Losing is for losers. Even when they lose, they use that as an opportunity to train harder. They want to compete with the same person again. Even in boxing, they say they want a rematch. Some people, you knock them down three times. No, they don't want to give up. Even the ref will say, no, no, stop this game. We don't want this fighter to die. It's the same with the spirit. And for that attitude, you get your own reward. You get even more respect sometimes than the so-called winner because of your attitude, your fight, your little guy mentality. Praise God, the underdog mentality. Anyhow, so talking about this uh, thing, so this morning, just to cut it short because the time is going, I don't want to make this too long or go into two parts. Uh, talking about this morning, where I've been moving around with this Agape uh, Grace thing, the Agape Love series, the last uh, section in volume two, I've been thinking, why do we go about this? If we go about Agape Grace, for the next hundred years, we will not finish talking. So I said, let me surprise people and ask for one special question from the Trinity, my people up there. So this morning, I just put myself together and I encourage them. I say, anything for your brother? Anything for your son? <laughs> anything? You know, they knew what I was talking about. Because one of the mysteries, maybe they will tell me, maybe they will love me enough to tell me one. They still haven't told me. Yeah, I keep asking. Just to digress, you know, when I was young, I used to ask my dad a lot of questions. Hard questions. Questions that other kids will not ask. I'll just ask. I'll ask and they just present that he ask. He will be looking at me. You'll be looking at me. What kind of a <laughs> bad son or useless son? At the point, just to cut it short, he said, um, the more I want to have to tell you, this is a discussion we're always having. Everything in life is not go, does not go by logic. That's one of the best things I learned. One of the best statements I got from my dad. He said, everything in life, because I was very good in mathematics at a point. I was so good, all this logic, philosophy, I was missing all together. Oh, you want to go into an argument with me? You cannot win, even till now, you know. But that statement he made that everything in life is not logic. It's not logic. It doesn't go A to B to B to B to B. No, if you have that kind of mentality, you're going to go into trouble and have headaches, into fights. Into fights. It doesn't work like that. So that's why maybe you plan that, oh, even the weather they say 50% chance. Because they cannot be sure. Or oh, did you hear the uh, tornado that happened in North Tower a few, a few weeks ago, a week and a half ago? You know, who can plan that? Who can expect, oh, there's going to be a tornado today or uh, the next one we can prepare? Most times the wind gathers, the forces and the front and everything gather together and they make it conducive for that to happen. Push! It happens. People are devastated, people are shocked. But when you have God, you know, no matter what you go through, God is your God. God will remain God. He will be forever God. So, even if you die in the process, that is the best thing that can happen to a believer, to die. Believing God. You know where you are going? It's a heavy party in heaven. Non-stop party. 
praying, dancing, singing. In fact, then when you are able, you don't need to pray. You have everything already. You are just celebrating. It's celebration, thanksgiving, praising God. Because you are now part of God. So all the praises and everything, as God is receiving his own, you are receiving yours. You are part of the equation. Delicious. So don't be afraid of dying. Don't be afraid of anything. God's grace is sufficient for you, says the word of God. My grace is sufficient for you. So no matter what, the worst that can happen, not the worst, the best that can happen to a believer is to die and go to heaven. I'm not saying go kill yourself. Nobody is against the law of God to kill yourself. Let them come and kill you. If they are bold enough, if you are strong enough spiritual, they will not even dare it. Because all your enemies will be the one to make sure justice is saved because they don't want to be held accountable because they are the people proud and trying to kill you trying to, they quickly pounce on that guy because he has disgraced them he has exposed them they pounce on that's why you see all these law governments oh investigation before all those things they were with the government not there everything was not there even sometimes some people call the police oh my life is threatened like they don't even listen who is threatening you oh don't worry are you taking your medication or oh, are you sleeping well are you doing this are you dying that that's what people do that's what the government do that's what the police do or they just come when they when it happens then even the commissioner of the police the chief the chairman the government everybody want to be make sure that oh they are not held responsible but most times there are a lot of warning calls. They want to do a query, speech on an inquiry. This is the worry, barbell shaking. That is not the point at that time. The life is gone. But make sure your life is connected to Christ so that you can go to heaven. So going back, going back to that statement, when I had uh, Trinity, I wanted to know how they were formed, when they were formed, how they came from. You know what they told me? I don't know if anybody's heard this before. This is what the Spirit of God told me this morning. He said, we are everything out of nothing. We are everything out of nothing. That is why we can create everything out of nothing. Tell your people that. That is a statement from God this morning. We are everything out of nothing. That is why we can create everything from nothing. Naru so that is what God wants us to know for now that they are everything out of nothing. They can create everything from nothing. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. We're going to be struggling with time today. We'll try and break it into do. Should we break it or continue? I think we should make it in one scoop. So that people don't start finding part one or they don't find part two, we'll make it in one scoop. You just take your time and read it and watch it and pause it. Please, don't mind. Don't mind. Just take your time and read it. It's delicious. If it's not delicious for so you, call me. If you have any queries or doubts, call me. Call me. Send me an email. Send me a text message. If you don't know how to reach me, try through the social media. You can find me. You can reach me. You can Google my name. You might see my, some, my contact information online. You know, And uh, I just want it to be for those who are really serious. I could have mentioned it here. There's no need to mention it here because I don't want un unnecessary and uh, fishing or fishing calls. Not that I don't take any calls, but certain things are not a good use of your time. God has given us a limited set of time daily. We have to make it count, not for irrelevance or minutiae. Thank you, Jesus. Let those who have the heart to reach us, let them find a way to reach us. And make sure that when they reach us, we give them the best attention, the best knowledge, the best impartation that they desire. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So that's it. So God said they are everything out of nothing. That is why they can create everything out of nothing. So now let's go into this same thing. We'll just do as much as we can in summary. If you need more, it's a very big subject. It's a very big topic. A big. We even did some uh, uh, scriptures pulled from this thing. We are looking at about 146 scriptures. Scriptures. 
Under our policies, we can't go through all that in one day. So, if you want to know more and more, go online and check uh, uh, within them, maybe like a biblegateway.com, and search within their own search parameters, search for grace, and you see more than enough. You just take your time to go through them. It's very delicious. So, when we talk about grace, we'll read the uh, section that was in the firing line that we cut off. We didn't want to go into that. It was too much at that time in March when we were in the mission trip. There were so many mission trips, so many mission trips. We couldn't, well, it was not possible to put everything. And that's why we did putting the land together slowly now. So that it's not too much for you. It's not too much for us. There's a limited capacity the brain can handle. My heart is as big as Christ's heart. But the brain, God does not have interest in the brain. Because if you go concentrate too much on the brain, it will confuse you. Don't concentrate on, it. concentrate on your heart. If your heart is sweet and good, everything else falls into place. Praise God. So, looking at that, and this is so the text is a uh, grace. Who makes grace? How do I refill my grace? The first question there is that uh, what is grace? The meaning of grace is uh, according to uh, some materials from uh, Hebrew rules, restoration, grace, and law from uh, wiki books. That's the source of this definition. It's a good one. So I just wanted to give I can give my own definition, but let's just stick with this to make it uh, easier and simpler. It says, the word grace, which means chain in Hebrew or charis in Greek, as it is used in the scriptures, literally means favor, to bend or stoop in kindness to another as a superior to an inferior. His grace has been termed on end. His grace has been termed on end kindness but it is more than an attitude of favor or mercy so the grace of god is more than favor is more than mercy you know i'm talking about that definition i'll just quickly jump into some um, uh, material uh, where is it now but i want to give you some portion of it uh, praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the mighty name of jesus praise the mighty name of jesus Nakarabakoshi. 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 Okay, I've seen it. Uh, this is a, a post by one of my friends, uh, followers. I follow me. I'm following him on Twitter. His name is uh, Ledrus, uh, Ledru Fox. He's a minister in the Caribbean. Uh, he sent a post it's on September 5th, 2018. You know, and that post on that Twitter, I saw it at about 10.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's Edmonton about another time. He says, grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. So we've done something wrong, like most of the sin commit. If it's God the Father, <laughs> he just knowing about it, you know, you will be incinerated. <laughs> just God knowing about the sin, you will be incinerated. But because of Christ, he doesn't see all those sins. So the mercy continues to flow through Christ. Grace continues to flow through Christ. So just understand that. That mercy, grace, is uh, when God gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. Nikarabakoshi. 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 Kurabarabakoshi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Kings. So, now going back to that uh, message. So, if we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 9 to 10. It says, um, we're going to just read limited scriptures because of time. Go online, search for grace. BibleGateway.com is a good source. Uh, these are the guys that make a uh, New King James version of Bible and then the Master Bible Leadership Series and all those kind of things. They have good material that is written in regular, plain English. You know, you can understand and get what they are saying. If you don't get it properly, know that your spirit is not deep properly. If it's deep, it will explain it to you. But if you are not sure, ask questions. Ask your pastor. Ask your leaders. Ask your people. Ask anybody. Ask. Go online and ask them from. Put it out there. Let everybody ask. Let some people mock you. Don't mind that. The main thing is to get your answer. The answer will enrich you. Will strengthen your faith. Will bless you. And will reward you in due course. In due time. Praise God. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 10 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast of all, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Verse 10 says, That is 
why I, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, that then I am strong. Praise God. So that's what Apostle Paul talking about. That. God is talking, speaking through him to us. You know that when we are weak, that is when we are strong. So when you think, oh, you are hungry, you are anything, pray. You have no money, you have no food. Pray, convert it before the hunger are Convert it into fasting mode. Convert into praise and worship. Let God kick in. Let him feed you. Let him take care of you. Within a short time, results will come. God will, God will make a way for you. But be faithful. Be honest. Be truthful. Don't serve God because of the bread and butter, fish and uh, bread that Jesus Christ gave. No. Serve him because you trust him as a father. The way you love your father. The way you expect your father to be. That's all Christ is and Jesus is. Uh, Jesus Christ and God and the Trinity is to us. So understand that. When you are able to tap into that understanding, everything will be smooth and easy. Oh my God. We're going to flow further with time. Be patient, be patient. We're almost done. We'll try and rush the rest through. Um, look at Romans uh, chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. That's uh, dead to sin, alive to God. Number, verse 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? So what it saying is that we have the grace of God. We have the grace of God, but we should not push it push it to go and be doing things that we're not supposed to be doing and we'll continue to do it there's a point where you cross the line and you may not know when you cross the line and you become breakfast for the enemy they use you as an example to disgrace you to humiliate you to destroy your family to destroy your business to destroy your career to destroy your relationships your marriage your children the devil they take pride in doing wickedness that's their trademark Wickedness, evil. You expect to go there and get ice cream. If they give you ice cream, be careful. If the devil gives you ice cream, be careful. Maybe that's your last supper. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if we look at Job 36, 11 to 12, I like this scripture very much. It's one of my favorite scriptures and I use it a lot. I, I, I reference it a lot. Most churches, they use 36, 11. But me, I go for that to the 12, so that, to the 12, so that you can see the pros and cons. He says, 11 says, if they, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they do not obey, that's verse 12 now. If they do not obey, verse 12, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Yes. If you look at it literally or spiritually, you know, dying by the sword. If you go and do things that you're not supposed to do, you are doing living wide life, you are driving above the speed limit, or you are stunting on the road, or you are punching or provoking people or causing trouble, you could die. You may die. You will die. That's the physical one. And the other part, when you say the, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit, you might die by the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. If you don't have the word of God, you don't have any tools to survive. Even here on earth, in eternity, forget that. You, or you won't, don't even think about it. You will not make it to heaven. You know, so praise the Lord. So, uh, doing over some um, uh, material that uh, we want to quickly show you through and uh, try and push for time is uh, the more important thing you should know is that grace is the love child. Of agape love is Jesus Christ that gives us grace that we use now in the Old Testament. They may have had grace of God, and you saw how they had how rough they had it with God the Father until Christ stepped in to save us from destruction. Because God the Father, I've seen him, he's a very furious guy. I'm sorry to say, part of me, God is furious permanently furious. Why? Because he's watching his son Jesus, Jesus does not let him get any action. It's in the way. It's in the way of the father. Imagine your dad wants to go out now. Uh, uh, I don't know, spank your little kid or little brother. And you, the son, you stand. You, the first son, you stand in the way. You don't allow your dad to enforce or do law. Or maybe the government wants to arrest somebody. You stand on the way. You wouldn't let the police go in. Do you know what that is? That's what Jesus is doing. That's how much he loves us. That is part and core. core this is the core part of the agape love. 
He has so many paths. Forgiveness is there. Grace is there. You know, so many things. Even faith. For us to be able to have faith and hold on to faith. You think it's by your power? You have faith in somebody you are not seeing? When you're seeing your uncle, your friends, your family, you cannot even <laughs> have faith in them. And now you are seeing some old man, very old ancient man up there. <laughs> it's by grace of God that you can have faith. By grace of God, you can have love. By grace of God, you can have hope. By grace of God, you can have joy. Even peace. It's by the grace. So, going quickly into it, before this uh, thing knocks me off, uh, because we are exceeding time that we wanted to do for one volume, uh, the f- grace and agape love, like we said, they are related, they are similar, almost the same thing, almost the same thing, even maybe the same thing, you can interchange them for each other. But agape love and grace, there's almost no difference. It's just that agape love has other components. Grace has those components too. So, grace is agape love. Jesus is agape love. Jesus is grace. His feminine name, because a lot of females bear grace. So it's, maybe his feminine name is grace. Jesus. <laughs> I hope you don't mind that. You know, don't worry. I've seen guys bear, actually, there are some names in my home country where both men and women, but grace is a very powerful name. Very powerful name. Very sweet name. If you are bearing the name grace, make sure you deserve it. Make sure you are worth it. If you are not worth it, you are bringing shame and disgrace unto yourself not to god god cannot be disgraced god cannot be ashamed who is it that is going to be, who is that that will make god ashamed the owner of everything ashamed of what he has given us more than we can ever imagine he has more than we can ever imagine in stock for us so what is he going to be ashamed of his son died that was the, that was the decision of the son because he loved us he was not ashamed he was beaten by stripes that stripes, we are healed. Praise God. No, so now, so there's a saying that um, your mother told you not to play with fire, fire will burn you. It's almost like grace. Fire is good to a point. But at a certain time or point, if you go and touch it, you might get burnt. Or you put too much fire on something you are doing, or there's unnecessary fire, it could be dangerous. Grace is like that. Push. Don't 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 take your chances too long. Don't take your chances too much with grace. Don't try it. Just live in that sufficiency and try to enjoy it and make full use of it for your benefit, for the benefit of your family, for the benefit of your friends, for the benefit of your community, for the benefit of your country, for the benefit of society, for the benefit of the world. Praise God. So your mother told you not to play with fire because fire will burn you. That's grace. You keep playing with one, then you get burnt. So, uh, one of the things that uh, one of the things that uh, that can make us quickly run out of grace is uh, worldly enjoyment. I'm not saying to enjoy yourself or have fun, go for dinner going is wrong, but when it is uh, enjoyment of sinful borderline attend. There are some borderline attend. Some ministries they think it's okay to drink wine. Some think it's okay to drink beer. Some say it's okay to do this, okay not to do that. But you have to know what God is saying. Check your heart. When you have the Spirit of God, it, God will tell you the right thing. And if you know the right thing, you go and do more, you are in trouble. Like they say, don't drink and drive. You know, they say there's a limit. How do you test it in the bar when you are limited? And once you are getting drunk, you are getting, do you know the limit at that point? People offer you to ride, you refuse to take a ride. How? So, those are things that can make you lose grace. Because you might just go to the road so you can drive. Police stops you. And then you are arrested. You expect people to sympathize with you. Demonic and foolish lawyers sometimes. Ah, oh, no, there's a curse. We're going to fight it. Bring all your service. Bring your RSP. Sell your mortgage. We're going to fight it. At the end of the day, maybe you are free. You lose all your money. You will lose something. 